Seven Women, Seven Words of Powerful ser Service. These wonderful women, preachers up here, and pastors, and evangelists. And... Amen. And they have a word. So we've been doing it on the West Coast. This is our eighth year. So we thank God for blessing us for eight years to be here, and we're excited about it. So that's what we have on today, and we'll be speaking on the seven last sayings of Christ. And each woman will have a separate word, and they'll be coming to us in between. We'll be blessed by uh, our minister, Kathy Brooks, will be yeah. ministering to us in song of the day. Amen. Yeah. And also one of our preachers, Elder Sheila Rock, will be preaching today, and also in ministering in song. You already heard from Pastor Jerry and our wonderful musicians and some of our praise team and they'll probably come in and out and, and, and help us out. But we're here to bless the name of the Lord and to let God know how much we appreciate what he is doing for us. Amen. You ready to get started? Amen. Amen. Now coming to bless us is our own Dr. Tanya Lewis, One Faith Fellowship. The first word, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. God bless you. Amen. God is good. Amen. for being a part of today. You could have gone any other place, but we bless God. Mom, we love you, we honor you, and we bless God for you. Thank you for being the beautiful you. Amen. 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 My sisters, God bless you. I love you. Jesus left the glorious presence of his beloved Father, heaven and fellowship of the saints, to come to the self world. He came on assignment, on a mission from the Father to bridge the gap between self a man and his heavenly Father. Bridge the gap so that one day we can have that blessed assurance that we will spend eternity with Jesus. But we don't have to wait until then. We can rejoice now. Amen. Because it's ours right now. Hallelujah. And so we understand that he left that environment for at least 33 years. He under, Jesus understood that his mission, his earthly mission, was going to be a combination of love and, and, and including forgiveness. But that his mission was going to also in, um, um, allow him to suffer and to be abused and to be um, scorned and to eventually be crucified by the ones he came to save. He told his disciples in Mark 10, 45, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Yeah. So this first saying of Jesus, what I have in Luke 23, 34, mm -hmm. says that then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, yeah. for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment, and cast lots. It is believed that these words were spoken very early, probably uttered at the terrible moment when Jesus was outstretched there on the cross with nails being driven through his, the palms of his hand and his feet. But in spite of Jesus, our Father, giving his only begotten Son the mission of crucifixion, in spite of all that Jesus had been through, being rejected and beaten and scorned at the hands of those who he came to save, Jesus' first words displays his heart and attitude toward his Father and, his, and mankind. You do know that we can cop an attitude with God. When we start going through something, we can't cop an attitude to God. But this displayed Jesus' attitude toward his heavenly Father who sent him on a mission and also the men that crucified him. So Jesus said, Father, hallelujah. He didn't say, Almighty God, Lord of hosts. He didn't say, the man upstairs, he said, Father, 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 Father. How many of you have called on 
him as your father. I like to call him daddy, God, because that brings him close and personal. Hallelujah to me. Jesus was referring to father displaying a personal, tender, and intimate relationship with God. Jesus' completion of the mission of crucifixion would enable us to share also this personal and intimate relationship with his Father. As stated in Matthew, you know, the Lord's Prayer, our Father, yes. hallelujah, yes. which art in heaven. Yes. Yes. Referring to God as Father displayed Jesus choosing to focus on his Father's love and faithfulness rather than what he was going through on his way to accomplish what he was assigned to come here for. We need to learn something from that aspect. Not focus on what we're going through, but focus on the faithfulness and the love of God that sent us on this mission that will enable us to complete this mission if we just keep our eyes on him. When we begin to take our eyes off of him, we begin to sink, but the devil is alive. We can't complete the mission that God has placed in our hands, amen? Amen, amen, amen. And so uh, Jesus knew he was going through. We have to also know that we were going through. Jesus was going through the cross to accomplish his mission and also to go back to his father. We're just going through life. I know we ran into some difficult uh, situations, and I know that sometimes it be hopeless, and I know sometimes the enemy tells us we're not going to make it, but he's a liar. We made it this far, and he has not brought us this far to leave us now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so Jesus knew he was going through the cross yeah. to accomplish. And I want him to say, well done, right. thou good. I, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm working for. I want to hear my daddy say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So Jesus, Jesus, Jesus chose to call his father, father. Jesus loved us in spite of our actions and demonstrated as he took the time out from suffering. It was no walk through the uh, 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 park and it wasn't a picnic. Jesus took time from what he had already experienced, what he was going to experience, and even the continued rejection of him. Jesus took time from all of that and not focus on himself, but he focused on us and he said, Father, forgive them. He wanted it to be understood that just like he's our great mediator and intercessor in heaven, he was kind of giving us a preview of what his mission uh, in our life was, that even in heaven and on earth, that he was extending that intercessory prayer for us. Nothing but the grace of God that we're still here. All of us know that we should be dead and gone. All of us know that we're worthy to die, but the grace of God, but the grace of God, but the grace of God. the grace. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad for the grace of God? Don't you love the grace of God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we get a glimpse of this. Uh, Romans 8.34 tells us, who then is the one to condemn us from the New International Version? No one. Christ Jesus died. More than that, he, he was who was raised uh, to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. I am so thankful that I have a 24-hour intercessor. Amen. He placed in our heart uh, uh, recently that he's our stalker. You know, stalkers, you know, stalkers don't, you know, they want you removed. They don't, you know, they don't let you go. You're always in their vision. Well, he loves us just that much. He's a good stalker. Some of those stalkers we got to take to court and lock up. We ain't got to lock him up. His love has locked us up. to the Father because he knew the Father heard him. Stop tripping. We, have, we know God hears us. We've walked with God long enough. Stop asking. Do you hear me? When you're going to deliver. He, the Father hears us. That's okay. Ain't no big thing. Yeah. The, 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 um, the, the Father hears us and the Father sees us and the Father cares. So he said, um, Father, forgive them. Forgive them. Forgive them. You know, he can say forgive them because he had first forgiven them. See, we can't forgive. We can't given people. We have to learn how to forgive others and then present them to God. And so Christ 
was saying forgive. He wasn't saying forgive them because we weren't guilty. He wasn't saying forgive them. And I know that uh, many of the commentaries uh, focus in on, on, on the actual soldiers and, and Pilate and all of them. But at the end of the day, it was for all of us. It was to buy all of our forgiveness. It was to, it was to pay a ransom for each one of our forgiveness and, re, and, and way back to the Father. So when he says forgive them, he wasn't saying that we're not uh, uh, guilty. But he was saying to release us and them from the legal and moral obligation of consequences of our sins. To counsel and pardon the debt of sin. Yes, because we were guilty. To write it off. You know why to write it off? Because we couldn't pay it anyway. And so, and so just like today, they write it off some of our bills. Uh -huh. 
event that they had. Their wedding. And the Holy Spirit spoke to my mind. So what are they supposed to do? Re recreate the wedding? Invite everybody that came? Have everything like it was? Just to please you? Impossible. So you need to let it go. The Lord is saying today, you need to let it go. We need to let it go to free ourselves. We got a job to do. We've also been given a mission. And we can't complete our mission if we're sitting around mad and get attitudes at people Amen. who knew not what they do. See, these people knew what they did, but they didn't understand what they did. Amen. These people, you know, they knew that he had created miracles and done miracles. He knew that. They knew that. They knew he had spoken and evidence had been given of who he was, but they did not understand right, the totality. Right, right. If people knew that when they were mean to us, they were only pushing us up Right. A little higher. Yeah. If they only knew what they were creating within us, yeah. the devil would leave us alone. All right. yeah. But you know what? Take that around with and let God bless you. Let God build you. Because the devil is alive. He rose to give us the victory. Let's rise to give others the victory in Jesus' name. God bless you.